Hello and welcome to the review for Captain Samurai Toothpicks the Mantis Lord. Um, this mock has quite the title, obviously. Uh, I want to make this video short because that was the intent with these new Watching Relic mock reviews was to be like really concise. And the last couple that I posted were like getting longer and longer and closer to the old length of video. So we're going to try to to actually do the thing that we're supposed to do today. Um, anyhow, I'll just start with explaining the name, I guess. Um, I posted, not posted, I sent a early whip picture of, uh, of this mock to a friend while I was working on this, and uh, he, he just called it that. That's literally where it comes from. That's the whole story. My friend, I, I don't remember exactly what he said. He said, well, if it isn't... Uh, Captain Samurai Toothpicks the Man's Thor or something like that, and I was like, oh my goodness, this name is getting canonized immediately. And uh, he thought I was joking, but little did he know I was 100% serious. It's so canon, in fact, that I have some lore around it. So the idea is that this guy is a an assassin or a bounty hunter type character, and um, he has some rivals and enemies and things that work for the same faction that he does, trying to outcompete him and his work. And one of them at some point... Uh, called him this whole title as like an insult or a joke and he just donned it as his official business name for what he does and that's now how he uh, likes to be referred and uh, the best part of the lore the the detail that I'm very proud of is uh, hold on I gotta get like an epic trailer voice going here <clears throat> his friends call him captain his enemies call him toothpicks. That's, that's, yeah. I'm, I love this mock. I love everything about it. Uh, mostly the mock itself, but the name is a great cherry on top. As far as the story behind the build, uh, pretty much just I wanted to use those gunmetal tack dogs heads for something. And that's it. That's the whole story. Let's get into the build. Okay, so the feet are straight up just hand connectors. I know it's not everyone's favorite design, but it just worked well for this mock. You needed really small feet. So, you know, these, uh, yeah, they, they work. They're pretty stable, despite how small they are, because this mock is fairly tall, but very, very thin and very light overall. So, uh, they totally get the job done. And, oh, right as I say they're stable, he just collapses on himself. Uh, we also have the skull villain or skeleton villain uh, bone pieces, which there's a lot of pieces on this mock. It kind of centers around the tachydox heads, but there's a, a, a number of pieces across the mock that I'll talk about that are in that area of sort of being pieces that I think are kind of cool, but just never use on mocks. And uh, these bones are totally, uh, totally those types of pieces for me. Like, as soon as I saw them, I'm like, those are neat. And then I proceeded to not use them on anything for six years, almost. So, <laughs> they're finally on, like, a serious mock that I actually posted. And they totally work. Obviously, this guy has a very thin, lanky, sort of sleek samurai kind of look to him. So they worked out great for this one. Uh, then we have these sections of the legs up here, which are based off of a design from Mitch Henry, I believe, from his uh, Tahu Nuva mock that he recently released. I'm sure other people have done similar designs because it's a pretty basic, obvious use of parts, but it looks awesome. It's just got a great, nice kind of shaping to it. And I love this Technic cam on the side. These are some of the most underrated pieces, man. Uh, so, uh, so useful and also just so nice looking for shaping and stuff. Like, it's just a great little part. Uh, and then the thighs are just, uh, CCBS with some Technic to fill in the gaps. They work. They're not fancy. Um, and then we come to the skirt. The skirt is another example of utilizing pieces that I kind of always wanted to use on something but never really did, which are just these big black Technic panels from probably jet tracks but i honestly am not sure um he also has these little blade pieces which kind of add to the samurai aesthetic i think 
you know, just adding some random blades. That's realistic. Uh, it, it does make it look nice, though. I think it just adds to the, uh, the textures and the shaping of the mock, and it just looks kind of kind of spiffy. It's got a little chain around his waist, a little metro chest, a little tire in here to fill in some gaps. Tires are great for that. Uh, and on the back, we have uh, a, yet another example of another piece that I rarely use, which we have some Thornax launcher pieces. These aren't even pieces that are that are in like the camp of being cool but not utilized often. These are just pieces I straight up don't like normally, but I found a purpose for them, so that's cool. Uh, we have some Borok eyes as well. Another nice thing about this mod is just the color scheme, because uh, I utilize some colors I don't normally really go for. One being gunmetal, another being uh, translucent orange. There's not a lot of trans orange on him, but it's here and there, and I think it really works well with the gunmetal and the black and gray. And uh, he has like a fairly muted color palette, but I don't know. I like it. It just feels unique somehow and uh, really worked out for the overall design of the mock. Sorry, I got to move the microphone as I move up the camera. Moving on to the torso. Uh, oh my gosh, I almost just took the whole mock off his feet just by trying to move the elbow because the friction adder sockets are that tight. Goodness me. So uh, anyhow, the torso is obviously pretty simple looking. It's all centered around just one of these Tacdox heads. Uh, and honestly, yeah, I, I love the shaping of it. Like, it just looks like it's made to be like a, a tall, thin kind of abdomen up to chest, you know, sort of piece. And uh, it works great for a torso. Um, if I take it off, you might be able to see we also, inside the mock, have some pieces that are in that I always wanted to utilize them but never found a purpose for them type area, and that's, oof, I'm gonna have to take off the shield so we can get some lighting in here. Hopefully you can see it, but it's, it's one of those weird CCBS pieces. Yeah, you can see the middle ball joint there and then the ball joint on either side. I might put up a picture if it's not clear on the video, but it's, it's that weird CCBS piece with like two pins and then the middle ball joint and the two ones sticking out. And yeah, that's the basis for his shoulder and neck connection. And I, I never found those to be particularly uh, useful pieces, but they were always interesting to me. And I finally found uh, a purpose for them. And then you can see how the head is attached roughly. Uh, and we've got lots of Technic mumbo jumbo in here just to fill in gaps. Uh, we've got lots of hand connectors and things to fill in gaps, which is kind of interesting, but I think it works out pretty well. And uh, yeah, it was interesting designing this torso because the chin on this piece is so long that for a while, I just wasn't sure how I was going to attach a head. I thought maybe I was going to have to put this piece on the back, and that was going to make me really sad. But then I came up with this design for the neck kind of tilting back and then curving forward in this kind of creatureoid, you know, sort of almost dinosaur-like posture or something. And I think it worked out pretty well. You can see we have more trans-orange in the form of the, uh, the actual eyes. And there's also eyes in the chest plate just to kind of fill in the gaps, because why not? Um... As for the arms, they're super simple, uh, and here's a look at the back as well. It's pretty bare, but I think it's okay that way. I honestly don't really feel an urge to cover it any more than it's covered, because this is supposed to be a fairly minimal, slim kind of mock. Uh, the arms are simple. There's not much to say besides just the articulation is kind of kind of wonky. You sort of have to, like, <laughs> pop the Mata piece, this little piece on top of the Mata foot, like, oh yeah, and then and then the socket wants to wants to move the hand connector out of the way, and then that piece gets. It's there's a lot of hindrance is the point. I'm I'm rambling on incoherently, but that's that's the moral of the story. It still works though. Uh, there's not much up and down or in and out, but it can go forward and back a little bit, and it's it's enough. It's enough in my opinion. Uh, and then of course he has his weapons, which are gold because that's just kind of the pieces I had for like a decent set of swords and a little shield. Um, I honestly think it works out pretty well, um, despite being kind of a random color addition. And um, I really like the uh, the little shield on the shoulder too. I think that's a nice sort of design aspect of this mock. And overall, yeah, that's pretty much it. I love the way this mock turned out. It's super simple, super minimal. You know, a lot of times I have sort of a tendency as a mockist to really cover mocks in a lot of greebles and more than that, a lot of armor. I have this kind of compulsion to just make sure that no area is too exposed or too, like, basic. Um, and may maybe not necessarily basic, but just too thin, I guess. I mean, I, I generally make pretty bulky characters a lot of the time, or at least really filled in mocks. And I purposefully 
forced myself on this one to leave some areas fairly barren and to leave this mock as being fairly minimal and simplistic in certain places and just have this really kind of minimalist, like sleek aesthetic to it. And I'm really happy with it. This one just turned out great, and it's definitely one of my more distinct looking builds. Uh, for size comparisons before we go, I do have uh, Bigfoot, so that's pretty spiffy. I also have, uh, I've still got Malum. There we go, and I think, do I? Yes. Yes, I also still have Vorox around as well. I don't know where Strack got off to, to be honest. Oh no, everything's dying. Okay, so that's basically it. Uh, I hope you enjoy this video. As usual, I have like no idea what we're doing next, although I think, I think it's my ice mock. Yeah, I have, I have an ice character. I think we're gonna get to her next. Anyhow, um, I guess I'll see you then. Thank you for watching. My name is The Watching Relic. This is Captain Samurai Toothpicks, the Mantis Lord. I always have to think for a second before I say it so I don't f*** it up. And, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll see you later, I guess.